Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Yackel. I'm a product evangelist over at DataBand. I'm excited to talk to you today about proactive data observability and incident management and how DataBand helps you detect data incidents earlier, resolve them faster, and ultimately deliver more trustworthy data to your business. Before we get into the demo, we have to set some stage here about kind of what we're facing today, specifically what software engineering teams, data engineering teams, data science teams are, are facing today, which is the fact that unreliable data is the most costly problem enterprise data teams face today. And why is that? Well, our, our friends over at Fivetran uh, did a survey recently, and they found that almost 50% of the time of data engineers is actually spent on maintaining data pipelines. That's a lot of time. Uh, I think that data engineers actually want to be building and not maintaining. There's really no confidence in the results. 71% that end users make bad business decisions. They're old or with error prone data. And then this ultimately leads to lost revenue. Around 85% of enterprises make bad decisions that cost them revenue. And, and if you're listening today, you're probably thinking, yeah, I, I hear this a lot, Ryan. And, and we agree with you because it seems like these data engineering teams are really underwater. Uh, we hear this a lot when some people we've recently, recently they're, they're talking to us today are, um, one of them from a cryptocurrency platform saying that they cannot afford to wait hours to know if a critical pipeline is down. That'd be way too long in the breach of our SLAs. Another 3D design company said that when we present our customers with inaccurate information, the result is a lack of trust. Real estate companies said today, we need our customers to tell us if our data delivers, delivers are late and it's frustrating. And of course, every day, our source data has missing, inaccurate, incomplete data. This is very, very challenging. And the reason why it's challenging is because these data engineering teams are really in charge of your data pipeline. Think about a train. They're, they're the ones managing the locomotive. They're the ones moving this train. They're pumping data. I think Gartner said that there was around 80 to 90% of all data that flows through an enterprise is actually done uh, through the data engineering team. And so they're pushing all this data through to analytics and products and science and for business analytics dashboards and client facing systems and machine learning, the list goes on and on and on about how people are using data to either have a competitive advantage over their customers or they're doing things like building brand new products. And without data observability, uh, the train really looks a lot like this. The data is coming through from your sources to your lake, to your warehouse, and you have this low data trust that leaks out into the analyst group, the product group, and also the data science group. So this, this really has this late detection and slow resolution around it before you're actually able to do that with data observability. So what's the mission of our of data bands? You'll probably hear a lot of other data observability tools that are out there today. Well, our mission is really to operationalize the immediate detection and resolution of data incidents. We want to be able to catch issues before you create costly business impacts to your business. And usually that revolves around monitoring your data as it's in transit and as it's in motion, being having a more proactive approach that leads to being able to detect earlier, being able to pinpoint these unknown data incidents and reduce that mean time to detection from days to minutes. We have customers that are really doing that today, resolving them faster. As soon as you detect them, we want to be able to tell you exactly where the issue is so you can go get ratted to it and bring that down from weeks to hours. And ultimately, allows you to deliver trustworthy data and enhance reliability and data delivery around your SLAs because you have this visibility into all your pipeline data quality issues. So how, how do we do that? Pretty simple. Um, with the observability and incident management, it's really a four-step approach. We'll automatically collect all your metadata um, with tools like Databricks and Airflow and DBT and your Python scripts. We'll collect all that data. Second is we'll build a historical baseline so that we can track the common data pipeline behavior and alert you on anomalies the next one is we create alerts and anomalies and rules based on deviations from that breaches. Then lastly, we resolve that through automation by sending you rapid triage around how to fix your data quality issues and keep your SLAs on track. And, and this really boils up into three main areas that I'll walk through in the demo today, which revolve around incident management for process quality, which is your pipeline states, your pipeline job performance, your job latency, your data quality, the data structure, the contents, the schemas, the actual data itself, and then lineage, the relationships between your data and your pipelines and map those back to downstream impacts. We wanna get you to this high trust 
environment where you have this media detection and rapid resolution as data is moving in transit to the ultimate end consumers. And just a real quick customer story, uh, Trax Retail is one of our customers. They uh, provide retail brands insights into in-store products using train machine vision modules. It's very cool if you go to traxretail.com to check them out. Um, and it really, the growth depends on scaling their ML system. And so before data ban, they were bogged down with all this inefficient engineering. They had a lack of confidence in their quality standards and the uncertainty of whether costs would outpace sales. With data ban, we reduced their pipeline incidents from about 60% of the pipelines to about 3% of the runs. They're actually telling us less than that now. Since data ban was able to track all of their pipelines, they were able to have a 3x increase in the deployed models while maintaining 96% accuracy. That was huge, being able for DataBand to monitor their pipelines as they're building more. And then they were able to 3x increase their end users because we were able to monitor while they were building different models at the same time. And then this ultimately led to no increase in infrastructure spend through optimizing their cluster utilization. So just a quick story about Trax um, and how they're seeing the value of data band with data incident management and observability. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the demo. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into the data band UI. You can see that I'm on this alert screen. I'm gonna come back to this alert screen to show off some use cases of how our customers use the product today, both on that process quality, data quality and data lineage standpoint. You'll see we have a bunch of different alerts here that are firing around data incidents. But before I get to here, I wanna go and just show you all the different tabs over here as an overview, and then we'll jump into some use cases. So the first one is this dashboard view that I can see all my different runs and tasks that are associated with my different data pipelines. And just as a glance, I can see you know what's failing, what's successful. I can do some look backs on you know 14 days, custom ranges, you know months out, and just kinda of see different trends that are going on with my data pipelines to make sure I understand the health of these uh, from a day to day or even a week to week, month to month basis. Uh, down below here, we also will pull together all your top errors that are associated with uh, different pipeline tasks or different pipelines. So for example, this one here, we have 143 errors that are attached to uh, this Airflow DBT job that we have going on. And then we also give you the pipeline and also the different runs associated with those over here. So you can quickly jump into those. If you keep a little bit further, you'll see that we also give you different pipeline statistics. So whereas the first one was the top errors report, this one's showing you the different pipelines failure rates, the failure counts, the error counts. It'll tell you the average durations versus your total durations. All this is great knowledge to understand how well your pipelines are performing. And of course, I can filter this by certain things up at the top here. So if I want to see you know, how often does this pipeline fail, it's got a 25% failure rate. Well, that's a problem. We need to make sure we investigate that and make it better. Then you also have the ability to add in different metrics as well in a dashboard view. So if you wanna see any anomaly detection that's going on for different metrics in your pipelines, you can do that. You can add multiple metrics over here. And then lastly down here, you can see the last active runs and tasks that you have just to understand, you know, for example, today I had this last, um, uh, run here that just got executed around 3 p.m. Uh, I can look into that um, along with the progress and so on. So that's a quick overview of the dashboard view. And again, this can be customized to fit it. But it's a great way to see all your incidents, data incidents in one view. Now over in the pipelines tab, I can see all the different pipelines that I have associated with different projects, uh, different sources and so on that I can quickly uh, filter by to see the different pipelines, both their, their run statuses and also any alerts that are around these different pipelines. And if I click into any one of these pipelines, I'll be able to see all the runs that are associated with these. Plus again, all the alerts they have. So any bad data incident alerts, we wanna report around failed jobs, run latent latency, any pipelines that have any schema change issues that were unexpected, any null records that are passing through on the data set level. We can see all those alerts are associated with their pipelines in this one view here. And right down below is the, the runs view, similar view that you're seeing in the pipelines, but now we're seeing, showing the, all the different runs and the latest runs that we have. You can visualize it by seeing the last run. You'll be able to see the scheduled date of that, the duration, for sources. All these things are available for you to understand how your runs are progressing. And then you can also drill into 
this guy, this example right here, which is this 311 get data, this is an example of a run that was all clean and looks really good. So we can see that here in the DAG view of this airflow pipeline that we have. And then if we have anything else, such as seeing the trends view of how the data sets were affected by this in the past, we can look to see any data trends that we're seeing as it relates to the affected data sets that are part of this pipeline. So for example, down below here, you can see the historical trend views of it. So back in today around 2 p.m., we had a failure, so we can investigate why that failure actually occurred. Looks like it was due to a failed operation we can look into. And it looks like there was no URL found a part of this API call around data that we're injecting from the source. So that's an example of seeing a investigating an issue that happened in the past and be able to investigate that. And then similarly, we can look at successful runs that we've had within this, this same uh, pipeline. So again, this was successful read earlier today at 11. So we're seeing some changes of what's happening uh, from a from an hourly perspective as it moves throughout the day. And then the alert screen, we talked about this. We'll, we'll kind of jump to this now, which is the alert screen houses all of diff the different alerts that you have set and defined. And usually this is these are kicked off and, and you're notified via notification like Slack or PagerDuty or email. You can define all these different alerts inside of DataBand here and, and put different severities attached to it. So for example, there's a critical uh, severity we want to add to this run state if it failed. That's a really big problem if our, our uh, pipeline is failing. Down below here, we've had a, we put a medium severity around a schema change associated with 311 get data. So this is where you'd actually define the different alerts. And then inside of the alerts tab here, you can see all the different alerts that are firing on a hourly basis, a part of, a part of data band. What we're gonna do now is walk through an example. So if I was a data engineer or a platform engineer or a scientist and we're running these pipelines and all of a sudden I get an alert around, uh, let's say a failed service. So I'll be able to, to go up to here and Slack will send me directly into the alert screen here where I can, I can see that, hey, this global sales DAG is something that, that, was, that has failed. I can click into that. And then what I can see is the error message right away for root cause analysis that tells me, hey, this AWS token was expired. That was the reason why it failed. I can see all the different affected data sets here as well for when I'm communicating to different stakeholders around how this pipeline failure is impacting others, both upstream and downstream. You'll be able to see the affected pipelines and also any missing operations they have here. So this is all really good information to see. However, it's also, you can be visualized from our data lineage perspective. And this is a great feature to understand the impacts of a failed pipeline um, that you're seeing here. So this daily ingestion pipeline was uh, the one that failed. And then if I, if I click on any of these data sets or tasks associated with the pipeline, it's gonna highlight the different dependencies downstream of different pipelines that are consuming this pipeline execution. So for example, over here, I can see that there's this European raw data sales extract. So if I click on this, you'll notice that really this EU sales processing are tasks and data sets only ones that are really infected by it. The US sales is not going to be since it's not dependent upon this European raw sales extract. So this is a really cool way to understand and visualize through data lineage the impact on a failed pipeline has downstream to your dependent data sets and other pipelines. From here, I can also click directly on this uh, sales extract pipeline and go directly to it, which is a great feature to quickly troubleshoot what's going on. So we are brought here and I can see, oh, look, there it is. There's the problem with the ingestion of what's going on. So this is the DAG pipeline that I can see here. We know where the failure is. We know that we have this AWS token that's expired. That's the reason why. Now we know root cause analysis. Again, a great way for, for you to know right away if something is going on within your uh, pipelines. I showed this earlier, but we can also see from this view as well, all the affected data sets that, that pipeline is uh, impacting. So looks like it's 
kind of has this yo-yo string to it where it's working well and then it drops. So working well and it drops. So good good information for us to bring back to the team to figure out uh, how can we can optimize this pipeline and make it better. And now we can also look at an alert that's a little bit different. And this is really around the schema ch a schema change. So over in the service 301 get data, if I click into here, I scroll down, you can see that we have an alert that is set based off of a distinct count of five boroughs. Uh, a record here that says that if the distinct count is over five, over five, so a trigger value would be six, go ahead and let us know that something's going on. And this is an alert based off of NYC city boroughs. You, everyone knows that there's five boroughs in New York City, so if there's a six one that's passed through that doesn't represent that, that's a problem. We wanna know about it right away. So here's an example where this alert fired around this. I can go directly into the pipeline to see what's going on. And we'll notice that everything was is working today. Everything looks good. Looks like that everything is uh, operating correctly here. But what's actually going on at the data set level? So if I click into the data sets, I'll be able to notice that actually something ha was detected as an anomaly. So if I click into this uh, schema here, you'll notice if I scroll down, and I select the borough column, and then I select the distinct count, you'll notice that we had an anomaly that was detected right here. So usually we're getting five, 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 five. This is really good from the data we're being sent into the system. Well, this is an example where our anomaly detection alerted us to say, hey, this anomaly is out of range. This is a problem uh, that we have going on. So this is really cool because from this view here, I don't have to uh, load a different tab or go into another view. Now we can jump directly into that um, data set and actually analyze it from a data set overview. So now we've talked a lot about pipelines. Now we're looking at data sets. We detected an anomaly around a distinct count value within a table. We can see all the different rows that are written and read from this data set uh, from day to day. We can see the daily operations and we can also see anything related to issues around this data set. So we can see that there was those schema changes we talked about. We had some fail pipelines as well. And you can go directly into all the different issues that are associated with this data set. This is a great, great view to see all the issues or data instance rather that are a part of these data sets and pipelines and be able to get directly into understanding what's going on here. Again, great way for, for teams to do that. You can also see in the operations area and select different read and write operations to understand where anomalies are being detected as this data set is being consumed. So here's another example of anomaly detection found around a record count that was an, out of an anomaly range. Um, and it can do the same thing for any read operations uh, with the same data set. So there it is again. So that's a quick overview of data band and how we really operationalize data observability so you can detect instance earlier, resolve them faster, and ultimately deliver trustworthy data. Thanks for joining, and I hope you uh, like this demo. If you want to talk to us more, please go to databand.ai to request a demo, and we'll do a custom demo directly for you. All right, thank you.